So you've built your robotic operating model and you're starting to deliver these processes. Nordea team again touched on it earlier. Make sure that you identify the right processes for automation. You'll go into some business teams and they'll tell you exactly which processes need to be automated because it's their pain points, the ones that have really been troubling them. But actually, is that, does that make it the best for the robots? Do the analysis. There's tools that we've built. There's tools that our partners have got that can help you to truly understand what your pipeline should look like, quantifying uh, what's in there, the ROI that you're going to get, the investment in terms of effort and money that you're going to need for each process so you can make informed decisions about the processes that you put into your pipeline. This idea of the operations teams configuring their own processes, democratizing automation, it's brilliant, but it's different. So establishing it within the organization that it's all right for people from, the, from a business background to configure their own processes in a structured and controlled manner that's repeatable and isn't creating this new uh, version of gray IT. Sounds simple, but it's one of the things that quite often takes quite a while to get embedded into an organization. This next one is cryptically called introduce processes to production early in the delivery cycle. You could translate that to be testing in live. But if you say testing in live, in pretty much any organization that you all work for, anyone in IT will throw their arms up in horror. And years ago, I would have included myself in that because I started out as an assembler programmer in Halifax Bank. And we were told, you never, ever test in live. Everything that you do has to be done in test. You have to build this huge test environment that is representative of all of the different systems that we've got and all the accounts have to line up and the customer detail all has to line up. And it can take weeks, if not months, to pull this environment together. But actually, the digital worker is not making any changes to any of those, uh, those systems. All it's doing is reusing those existing assets in exactly the same way as the human workforce does. So why do you need all of this test environment? What are you testing? And I've seen it where people, customers have spent weeks testing that the test environment is set up correctly. And then transitioning it into production, which doesn't quite look like the test environment, so having a test that the process then works in production. It's crazy when you talk about it like that, but that's the way organizations, your organizations will instinctively react to this idea of, say, of testing in live. So use the term, introduce processes to production early in the delivery life cycle, you might get away with it for a while. Call it live proving, that, that's worked as well. But truly when an organization has embraced RPA is when you can have those grown up discussions with the senior representatives of the IT team and senior representatives of the business teams. And we see that it absolutely does work. The reason we know it works is the person that told us we should do this is called Jane Conroy. And she was the head of RPA, she wasn't called that then because there was no such thing about as RPA, in 2008 at the co-op bank. And after we, we'd been working with her to work out how to put this, um, these, this uh, product into the co-op bank, after a while she said, Neil, there's, there's got to be a better way than this because the test cycle is going to take forever. So it was actually Jane that came up with this, uh, this idea. And Jane is actually somewhere in the room today because she now works for me. She's one of my customer success managers, evangelizing out to our customer community about how to do it correctly first time, how to avoid these mistakes that we made in the past. And the other very, very important thing is think of this as continual evolution. In a traditional IT project, the build team build the solution. And then they put it into production, usually over a long weekend, descope a load of stuff and cost a lot more than it should have done. And then they run at the end, and they leave it to the people in the operations teams to run it, or to some people who are assigned to run it. Think of Blue Prism and the digital workforce as an ever-evolving thing. You actually learn more about your processes through the wealth of MI, management information from Blue Prism. You learn more then about every single action, every single decision, the criteria against which that decision was made once you've actually implemented your processes into production. 
So use that. Use that to continually evolve these processes. Because don't forget, every time you improve an object that supports one of these processes, it gets inherited by all of the other processes that you've written as well. So you gain every which way. So use this delivery approach that optimizes the use of the robots. Think laterally. Don't just think, oh, we've always done IT change management this way, or, oh, we've always written scripts for bots this way. Think, this is actually a digital workforce. What do our policies need to look like? 